last streaming gue sih. Dear friend of scouting, uh, we are very happy to have you with us in this uh, session. So before start talking and introducing the session, I will invite you to uh, see this small video. We are very sorry for this technical problem. I think we can resolve it already. So now is the video.
Well, so after this inspiring uh, video, uh, we exposed so the subject of this session, which is youth participation in society and uh, the role of scouting. So before starting, uh, I would invite you, if you, uh, if I can, may of course, to uh, to the whiteboard in order to let us share with us your expectations from this session. I will also invite our online participants, if they have uh, specific expectations from this session, to please, in this coming two, three minutes, share with us, and we will try together to reach them out. So please, if you have a specific expectation, just on one of the post-its. And I have pen. <laughs> After lunchtime, there is no, no better than sport. <laughs> There is more post-it, of course. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have some specific expectations from our online participants? Not yet. Thank you. Actually, I will uh, leave the floor to uh, my co-facilitator, but before that, uh, we will introduce ourselves very quickly. And uh, it's the third day. I may know that most of you know each other, and we will know each other during the session in order to win time. So my name is Mehdi Benkelil. I'm from uh, Tunisia, and I um, uh, have the honor and the pleasure to facilitate this session with my co-facilitator, Mary. Hi, I'm Mary Nugent, and I'm from Ireland. And just to, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've been in and out of sessions for three days now. Everybody knows that we're live streamed. Everybody knows that this is where we need to stand. And everybody knows that we have green squares. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so, sorry. Here we are. Um, so, a little bit about the objectives for this session. Um, we're going to discuss with, we're going to discuss during the session um, youth participation, obviously, the aim of our association and where it all fits, our, our movement and where the mission, where it all fits together. 
We're going to consider uh, the trends that we see in society for some examples that we will bring to you and some best practices that we, you will share. We're going to define the process um, as it's embedded in our programs or as we hope it will be embedded in our, in our scout programs for our national associations and the competencies that le that leads to. And then we're going to explore those competencies in some detail in order to ensure that we actively play a role in society or that's what we're doing with our young people. Yeah? Okay. So moving on. Everybody happy? Anybody any questions at this stage? Everybody in the right session? Yeah? Okay. Very good. <laughs> that's always a good place to start. So... Um, now we're going to look at a definition. Yes. Actually, youth participation is a concept that has been discussed through many years, and we have tried to make a uh, scholar universitary research on it. And we uh, found out a definition that can answer maybe the best, if, you, if I may say, to what we are doing in scouting. So uh, some of the scientists, especially Americans ones, Define youth participation as uh, having youth involved in goal setting, resource allocation, and program implementation. So it is a mean by which they influence the opportunities and outcomes of the larger society. When we speak about youth, sometimes and in many, many uh, research, they uh, talk about youth uh, participation as improving or empowering or helping participation of underrepresented persons. But if we look at the UN uh, reports, youth who are defined to be and between 15 and 24, in 2011 they represent 1.2 billion from humanity. So if 1.2 billion are underrepresented in decision-making process, there is something wrong. And in the same report, UN expect that by 2015, youth will represent 3 billion from humanity. So youth participation is no more an option. I think we think that it is actually something important and compulsory in order to have youth participating in their society actively. And ensuring youth participation is not an option that we give to youth because youth participation is already a right protected by the Convention of the uh, Protection of uh, ch uh, Children in the uh, Article 12. We had just made a copy paste from this article and you can take a look at it. It gives the right, the full right for young people to participate in all the matters that interest them. It includes also the participation decision making process for all what it uh, interests young people and also in their local societies as active citizens. Over so many years, a lot of academic work have been done, especially in the 50 last years, a lot of uh, scholar and university and also NGO work have been done trying to establish politics, uh, policies, strategies, etc. And from that work, many, many different youth, uh, youth participation, youth involvement models have been uh, established. Many of them are very, you are used to them, like the heart ladder, and there is maybe more than 20 or 25 different models. Actually, in this session, we will propose to use one simple model that we think can be applicable in, in different cultures, I mean, because many of them, for example, the heart ladder, which was used for many years for with uh, different uh, NGOs, have, sh have shown that it cannot be applicable in the European uh, context, as in the African context, as in the Arab context. So this uh, model we have chosen to work on is simply uh, and can be duplicated. But before that, Mary will challenge you in a small game. So. As you see, she is putting papers over the, uh, the, the room, and we will ask you if you may be split into groups among these papers and try in four minutes to resolve the, the challenge or the problem or the equation that is in this paper. So please, 
for our online participants, I will, you will also be challenged to resolve this equation in four minutes. Yes, it's already too much time. Oh, whatever. Sorry, can I just say that there are three different symbols? Can I clarify that I'm very bad at drawing, <laughs> as you might see? So something that looks vaguely the same size and shape is supposed to be the same size and shape. And so there are three different symbols. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It there, yeah, so it's a sum. You need to come up with a figure at the end, a number at the end, yeah? A number, yeah? It can be in the shape of a diagram, if you like, but it, it, it has to be a number. And you're on a clock. Well, each, each symbol represents something. Yeah? So it's up to you to decide what that something is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, everybody. Your time is up. <laughs> okay, if we could take our seats, please. <laughs> Yes, they do, yeah. yeah. You have it? The prize, you have it? What's the prize? They figure it out. Okay, so did anybody, you've, what have you got a proposal? Um, for our group? Yes. Uh, we suggest that um, a big glass should be panned, and then the uh, arrow, uh, assume it is 100, and then so 10 plus 106 plus 9 plus 205. That means 330. Okay, very good. Anybody else got a proposal? Oh, excellent. So we have a flip chart. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry, I need to give you the microphone. So 
two, three, four, five, and and it and and a big one of them. Okay, and what is that? A mountain? Well, we weren't sure. <laughs> so, well, well, we didn't we didn't know we didn't know what that big huge thing is there in the end. So we thought we thought the these things were ones, yeah. and we thought the funny arrowy symbol was ten. And then we couldn't decide what the big thing was. Okay. So we said, we'll write it down as a symbol. And then okay. our answer is that. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else like to offer? Yes? Maybe let me draw it and show you. Okay. This is equal to 10 small and then we have 20 and this is the big one we have one and we think that is equals to nine so actually it is we have three and so we have 59 okay anybody <laughs> anybody <laughs> okay May I have a pen? Thank you. I just. Do you want to share? Yeah? You want to share? Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, we also notice a pattern in the numbers. If we did that, which means we assume the wine glass to be one and the boomerang should be 10. And we noticed that it was 1 plus 16 plus 9 plus 25. And we noticed that those are actually all square numbers. <laughs> okay. So this is the last group, I think. Does anybody have anything to say? Do you want to? Okay. Fair enough. We'll move on. Okay. I have to say, we, I didn't ever think of the square number thing. <laughs> I wasn't that wide awake. <laughs> um, so... Um, none of these are wrong. This is uh, down here as 50, 10, 1, and the total is 100, if you do it like that. So it's a round number, so it's simple. Okay, but the idea of the exercise was about process, right? And in order to... Oh, actually, we have something to show you. The, one of the things about process and participation is involvement. And there was no real reason why anybody here would feel any sense of involvement with symbols and wine glasses and arrows. So there was, was there anybody in the room who actually was looking at it thinking, I don't know and I don't care? No? Yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. And also, it's a little bit complex when you look at it first. And if there isn't any reason for you to become involved in it or have any involvement in it, then... You know, why would you? Lots of the time. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> if instead we were talking about chocolate and coffee and fires and something like that, you may have felt more inclined. <laughs> or it may have had more meaning for you. And you may have been more involvement uh, or uh, in interested in becoming involved. And that brings us on to this, which is one of the, uh, one of the examples of youth participation, which just has three simple um, elements to it, right? And the first one is challenge. And so we gave you a challenge, and everybody was interested in the challenge in the first instance because we're all up for a challenge, effectively. And it does no harm to challenge people. It engages their mind. It encourages them to think. It encourages them to think outside the box and, and you know, push themselves a little bit. It's always a good idea. And so challenge is one of the elements. Capacity is the second so to have the capacity to do it, to have the, the ability to reason or the understanding of what the symbols meant or the understanding of the task or the, just the capacity to get involved, yeah? And the third thing that's really important and doesn't always follow through for scouts because, as you say, we're scouts, we're used to mindless tasks and we're quite willing to put ourselves out in the presumption that somebody else knows what they're talking about <laughs> and has a reason for asking us to do what we're doing. But in the general scheme of things, in the area of participation, connection 
is a, a very important thing, that it means something for me, that I have some value in this, that I can see a value in this, that I can see that it's going to make a difference to know this or to do this. Um, the first speaker yesterday morning spoke very well about somebody who was learning Chinese for months and getting nowhere until it was absolutely necessary that they knew it. And they learned it magically almost in two days because connection makes a huge difference. So when we're talking about participation in this sense and we're talking about building process in our program, in our national programs that, that will lead to active participation, these are some of the things that we need to remember are important. Yeah? And sometimes we think we know it all, and we do, but sometimes when we're challenged a little bit and we actually come up against something that you know, actually isn't of interest to us, it just reminds us that actually to be of interest is very important. Okay? So, so as Mary uh, was uh, speaking about, youth participation seems for us something like fundamental, normal in our scout activities. I will tr would like to challenge you once again if we can stay in the same groups you've made right now and one of the groups please here in order that uh, our online participation know that we are having a working group. It will, we will have two questions to answer in five minutes. Yeah. Can we, can we have the groups? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Maybe, maybe open, open like a, a moon in order not to see the backs. Can you, can, yeah, like a moon, you know, so that in the camera. They can see you. Yes. So the principle is that we will ans uh, answer you two questions. Uh, we will ask you two, two questions for which we did not found no academically uh, universitary answer. So we will challenge you to look for answer for unanswered questions. It will take two minutes per question, so you have to do it like very fast. But first of all, we will just explain by an example, concrete example, this uh, model of youth uh, participation. So for example, if the challenge in the society is unemployment, the scout movement cannot offer jobs. We cannot offer grants or money for people to open their business. But what we can do is building a capacity on project management, on entrepreneurship, etc. And here the connection is clear and is direct. So the scouts will be interested by this capacity because it will permit to them to respond to a challenge they have in their life and in their society. So th this is the idea to explain this model and we thought that this model can be duplicated even if the, uh, the uh, cultures are very different. So actually we are uh, going to the small groups work. So first question is, what is the age appropriate for youth participation for you? Can we achieve youth participation since the age of six or should they become 25 or whatever? In two minutes, please. Very, very quick, guys. So. <laughs> of course, if our online participant would like to answer, please do. Uh, uh, um, 13 to 35. Okay. Uh, for, for, for me, my, my personal view. Thank you. 
We will move to the second question in 10 seconds. So, second question. Which strategies or methods of youth participation have the most potential to empower young people? Too difficult. Three minutes for this question. Nothing from them? Would we finish in 10 seconds? Dear friends, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we should stop now. We know that it's very short time, but it's part of the process. Thank you. Can you, can you please go back? Actually, we, are not, we will not debrief on the answers. I will ask you to uh, have the answer with you, and we will come back to, the, to answering this question in the end, in the wrap-up of this session. But before that, uh, Mary will give you some examples of concrete youth participation in society, and then we will go back to the content. Okay, so there are many examples, yeah. There are many um, examples Probably you know some in your own society. Certainly in scouting throughout the years, we have had individuals who have gone on from scouting to make an active uh, difference in our own societies. Um, these are just a, no a couple of examples um, of young people, not necessarily from scouting, 
uh, of a very young age, and I don't know what age you saw when you talked about the age that youth participation starts, but these are a number of people, and it's a, an, uh, an, sorry, an article that came from the Huffington Post about young people. And this gentleman, when he was seven years of age, decided that he w wanted to do something about homelessness that he saw in his society. And he started by carting um, water on the back of his little red wagon and in order to sell it, in order to make some money and raise awareness for homelessness. And his current project is that he plans to walk across America from his home um, uh, to Washington, which is this, a total of 2,300 miles. And of course, he's not going to do it in the one day or the one week or even at the one time, but it's his current project to raise awareness for homelessness. This uh, next lady is, was um, adopted by American parents at the age of three. But when she was 11 and returned to her home town, um, she was devastated by what she saw as the uh, conditions in the orphanages, an orphanage that she had been adopted from and the other orphanages around, and decided uh, that she had the capacity to do something about doing that. And she raises, uh, she has a foundation called Peruvian Hearts where they raise money to provide teaching and educational aids to the orphanages in Peru. Um, this next girl um, has a brother who has, Aus uh, who has Asperger's syndrome, and she raises money online through a Twitter account um, for research into autism. Another uh, a good, really good example of uh, what an 11-year-old can do to make a difference. This you may have heard of, um, because this is quite well known. Um, this guy walks barefoot for a week each year, and it started in America, but it's a barefoot challenge that happens in November, I think, and it has spread throughout the year, um, again, to raise awareness for underprivileged people and young people who are homeless. So that's just some of, some of uh, what young, very young people can do. Yes. In, in the beginning, we made a review, and there is maybe more than 20 examples, and we have tried to uh, choose maybe the youngest or uh, the biggest, with the biggest effect on societies. I hope that this counter examples challenges a bit your answers about the first question. Actually, we will try to go back to uh, our scout context. So how the scout movement can really act on youth participation. And the two big starting points of our uh, work cannot be anything else other than the mission of scouting and the scout method. So actually, I will ask you, within the mission of scouting, what are the elements that should reflect scout, uh, youth participation in society within the scout programs? May I just ask you to speak in the microphone so that our friends online can hear you? Yes. So the question is, we all think or do that we are serving youth participation through our SCAT programs. But if we try together to have a, a, some criticism on what we are doing and go back to the fundamentals of scouting, which are the mission of scouting and the, and the uh, method of scouting that which we, we will talk about later on, what are the elements that are anchored already in there that can help or serve youth participation in our programs, because after all, after that, in our working groups, we will try to see if we are really using these tools. But before that, we have to identify them together. So please, you are all experts. Frederick, please. OK. Well, I think it's a course. Scout method is a peer education, so that youth lead other youth. That's a, that's a way of trusting a youth. I remember myself when I was 13 and I got on my first scout camp with my patrol. The leaders actually let us go alone. We were only 12, 13 years old. And still today, it's one of my biggest scout experience. was to re experience for myself as a young person the responsibility that was given over to me. Uh, and the adults believing that I could do a good thing. So, so peer education, yes. Okay. Even the, the elements of uh, 
personal progression. I will be able to do my things and progress to the next level. So I think both learning by doing and adult supports is the most important life because we, we usually learn when we try some new things, we, we may overcome some mis uh, difficulties or mistakes and we will learn every time to time. But at the same time, we need adult supports to provide us some guidelines, uh, guidance and also reminders so that we won't fail so easily and we can gain support from them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. I think um, uh, to affirm the uh, youth participation, to develop youth participation, the scout promise and lore is the most important. Because as long as the youth can follow and adopt scout promise and lore, they can do whatever they can do it. Because they are under the uh, structure or the the following the, the path of the scout law and promise. This is the most important, I think. Thank you. Please. To me, the patrol system is the most applicable one because it enables these young people to decide what they want to do and how they want, they want to do it. Our, our, ours is just to give them advice and guide them how best they can do it. Thank you. Please. Um, uh, please tell me if I haven't quite got this right, but I think we should, uh, through our program, etc., help with some sort of reward for um, youth participation. Either, either sort of assisting with this idea that actually it's a good thing and it's rewarding and it's fine and it's brilliant and they should do more of it. So we should, through our programs... I think at first our reward, and then I think I think our reward, and then it becomes rewarding by itself, perhaps. Mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Yes. Who thinks that the uh, using a symbolic framework for scout activities don't serve youth participation? I try to challenge you a bit. It's part of. Yeah, please. Oh, I think yeah. Well, I believe the symbolic framework enhances the creativity, maybe of uh, of 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 the scouts. Um, it gives them different ways for participating. To, to maybe approach different types of uh, participation, um, intelligence, ways of thinking, ways of, um, yeah, and, and, so, and so some people might not feel comfortable um, in a more formal way uh, to, to speak up, for instance, but through the symbolic framework, they will find new doors to express themselves. Okay. Is there any contrastic? Um, point of view, thinking that symbolic framework it, it don't really necessarily um, serve youth participation. Yes, please. Of course. I won't answer your last question. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but uh, maybe in a way, because uh, my opinion is that all of the um, elements of the scout method can help for the youth participation, uh, and I would refer now to just one which is not there yet. Oh, it is adult, resource, adult support. Well, but I would say that on adult support, it's very important uh, the adult attitude. Uh, if his attitude is to create uh, an environmental for the youth to express himself, or uh, he's uh, very direct, like you should do that and that and that and that and that. So, this is a very important how we use all the scouts element. Thank you. So our friend from Romania has uh, just gave us a, a, a wider answer. He said that all the element of the mission and all the element of the scout methods serve 
youth participation. Is there someone who disagree with that? I think. Oh, yes, Frederick, please. I, <laughs> I do not disagree. I just think that maybe you uh, try to provoke us a little bit before. I think that symbolic framework that we really like authorities sometimes, and some scout leaders I also experience, you see authorities. I mean, the symbolic framework is also that we really troop and then patrol and then the hierarchy is really clear. And they can sometimes build a movement which is really hierarchical. And this can sometimes be difficult for youth participation to, to unfold. Totally agree with that, yeah. So, if you all agree that the mission of scouting and the scout method, which are the fundamental of any scout program, serve youth participation in society, do you agree with me that youth participation is a sort of outcome of the scout program in general? Hmm, interesting. Yes? In, in the UK, we're talking about this a lot at the moment. I'm kind of yeah. excited by it. I think the outcome is somebody who feels able, feels confident, feels empowered to participate yeah. in society. I think that's the outcome. Wonderful. I think that's yeah. So, if it is this the outcome, it should go through a process. I mean, we were all here after five or ten minutes. We all almost agree on that. But in the beginning, it was not so visible. I mean, for any one of us, of us, it was one or two or three of the element of the method, etc., etc. So, do you agree with me that in our national scout program, we should have this kind of process, which is visible and anchored in our program, so that at any level, scout leaders is aware that through the game and the uh, teaching, the uh, learning. The, uh, by doing the not or camping or whatever, he is through this activity serving to empower young people in order to let them become active in their society, so active citizens. Is there any comment on that? Our aim, Mary and me, today is to try to challenge you on something that seems very normal for us, even for us before starting to prepare this session. Any comment on that? Yes. Well, it's not a uh, comment, it's a question, and maybe I'm getting to the next uh, subject. And my question is, do you have any tools that you can give us to measure the, the youth participation in our associations? That's a very good question. We will talk about later on. <laughs> it's, it's part of the unanswered question. So if you agree that there should be this kind of process in our programs, Mary will try to give you, it's an example that we, have, we try to uh, summarize from different articles we found, more universitary, not necessarily scout, but that can be applicable in our scout movement. So please, Mary. Okay, uh, I'm actually not going to, to do very much because what we're going to do again in, in a moment is a little bit of group work. And just to revisit this a little bit and say that uh, we accept, we all accept that it's a process that has to be present in our program at all levels from the beginning to the end. And it is a process where people feel engaged and informed and enabled. And um, the outcome, if we're talking about youth participation in society, is youth participation in society, and not really just about creating leaders, which is something that we very often do in our associations, or certainly have done in the past. So by raising awareness and uh, exploring and creating opportunities, we encourage people to think for themselves, to think outside the box, and to be um, better informed and again, to go back to something that Chris Lonsdale said yesterday morning, it's about uh, learning to learn and being motivated to learn and being motivated to get yourself involved. Like the video that we showed you in the beginning, 
referred to, it was one young person who could have very easily kept going or walked around or climbed over. And instead of that, he stopped to make a difference. And when you do stop and make a difference, obviously, you, it, it has a ripple effect and other people stop and help you. Okay. So enabling uh, youth to practice their knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And of course, through our programs, we build knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And if you're talking about a tool, I would suggest to you that the Scout Method is our tool. And I would suggest to you that each of the elements of the Scout Method is very valuable in that, but none more so than the patrol system. And like Addy said, the, the adult-youth relationship has to be proper, has to be workable, has to be has to encourage and enable the patrol system to work. But if the patrol system works as it should, then young people from a very young age have a, a voice, have the right to participate, have responsibilities that build competencies and, and feel valued and feel respected and feel like their contribution is worthy. And it, when we build that from an early age, then we're building youth participation. And we can't stop it. <laughs> if we did that, <laughs> we would uh, create a wonderful um, world. Yes. Um, waiting that uh, our friends from the uh, online community leaders write down the two or three comments from the online participation. Yeah, it's very, very good. <laughs> so, as uh, Mary was explaining, we think that we should figure out a sort of process which will be anchored and visible to, to the leaders at all levels. All what we are doing within scouting, what kind of activity it can be, it is serving youth participation in their society. But to achieve youth participation within the society, children don't, should have not only skills, but capacities. So, what we will try to work on later on in the working groups is what kind of capacity or, what, or should, can we have a list of the minimum required capacities to say that this scout will become, or this rover or whatever will become an active citizen in his society. And the second important question, and here I refer to uh, the comment of our friend from the UK scout, is awarding the activities or recognizing the capacities, is it important or no for the scouts in order to know that they gain this capacity that will permit him to play an active role in his uh, local, national, and even world community? And how can others, non-scouts, can recognize these capacities on their right value? So how to valorize in if, my, if, uh, if we may say, talk about valorizing these capacities, in order that non-scouts, stakeholders, etc., knows that our scouts or people who did scouting have the capacities that can permit to them to, to play an active role in their societies. So actually, I will uh, ask you to go back to the same groups. The, your starting point will be the previous questions what we have discussed now, and there is two questions actually. I will, after you split on the groups, I will give either to answer all for the question number one or for the question number two. And now we will have 20 minutes in order to uh, explore furthermore this uh, topic. So please, can you split into groups and one of the groups here? Thank you. So just before uh, giving the questions, uh, we got uh, three comments, uh, one comments and two questions from our online participants. We will uh, try to answer on that. So the uh, first comment from uh, Mr. James Stuttard, he said that, ah, hello. So we know what you think. Uh, we will just share it and thank you for tweeting it. So. He said that uh, very young people can do so much for their society. We totally agree, I think. Rewarding participation is very important. You will 
answer that right now, please. And the outcome, as he already said, and as we all agree, is an individual who feels empowered and equipped to participate in their society. So actually, while Mary is distributing either question one or question two, I will expose both questions. So the first question is, how should the elements of the process, the one that we were speaking about, can be integrated into the Scout Youth Program to ensure active participation as an outcome of scouting? And uh, for the groups who have question two, uh, it says, uh, how can the competencies acquired within the Scout Youth Program be valorized for the scouts themselves in order to know that they gain these specific capacities? The society, so civil society, non-scout, parents, etc., and for the stakeholders in order that they know that we are not just playing, singing, but that through this we are empowering young people to play an active role in their uh, society as an active citizens. So we will have 20 minutes, but now uh, after that we will uh, debrief and we will try to comment each other uh, questions. So thank you. Good.
I'm afraid to tell you that we, our working groups will finish in five minutes. And if I may remind you uh, to write down uh, in the flip charts. Yeah, thank you.
I'm really afraid to tell you that there's still only one minute. So, time is finished. Thank you very much.
lightning stretching. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much for your efforts. We will not have time to uh, have report from every group. So what we propose in order to have all the inputs is that uh, one of the groups that answered on question number one gonna debrief and then the other groups that had answered the same question will add if they have addings or discuss if there's something and then we open the discussion to everyone and we do so for the second question, because we will not have enough time. We still have only uh, 14 minutes. So any one of the groups that answered question one? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah. Question number one, the elements that we think it should be the process to be, to be in, integrated into the scout program is that we need to continue the patrol system and we need to give tasks and projects to them so that we can make them to plan, to do and to reveal, just like the learning by doing. And also, we have to start simple. When we start simple, they can, they can easy to catch up what we are doing and they can follow easier. And also, we need to motivate them, not only for, not the youth, participa youth participation is not only for the, those who are active participating in the scouting, but also we need to motivate those who are the pass passive one because we need to educate all the youth and we need to motivate them so that we can get all the youth together to learn and try. And also, so rewarding system is the motivation. And also we need to use all the above elements to run the troop so that they can have all, so that we can have more youth to, to join the youth participation. And also, we need to aim high and try to challenge themselves, try to reflect and try to think and so that we can have improvement and also the pro progressive training. And also, we need to focus on the objective, why, we, why they are doing this, and, but not only on what they are doing. Any you want to add? So, uh, Shelley kind of skipped this one a little bit. It's okay if the younger children are doing activities where they've come up with an idea to, to help their local community do something, and they're only doing it to get a badge. That's fine, because they're starting simple, and they can move on from that, and we can move on from that, and that starts that process. It's all right. You know, it, it doesn't feel right. It, it feels like it should be its own reward, but it's okay to offer a little carrot to get things going. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for the two other groups that had answered the same question, we have two other colors. If they have something else to add or something to discuss on this. After. So the groups that answered question number one, do you totally agree with that? Or do you have an adding or a comment or editing something or rewording? It's okay. And the third group also. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous vote. Wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, if it's okay, then... Ah, before that, sorry. Actually, for the group that answered question number two, do you have any comment on that or adding? Or Yes, yeah, so please. Well, um, at least uh, how it's written there, uh, giving projects and tasks, I, I think... Uh, Maybe it's not very good expressed because uh, it's actually s starting uh, to kill the, the involvement of the youth if we as leaders are coming with the projects. From my point of view, I would change it here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, I would put something like uh, 
ask them to create projects. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can uh, word, reword it as a uh, youth-led project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments on that from all the assistants, actually? Okay. So if it's okay, now we will move to the uh, question number two. So one of the two groups will be volunteer. Yeah. Please, please don't don't fight. It's okay. Thank you. Um, the time was very short. So uh, what we said, we said that uh, uh, how, uh, how the competence is to, to be aware by the, the youngsters. So to be aware by the youngsters is to be sure that uh, after the methods that we use, after the activities, we uh, are uh, giving uh, the good time for reflection, for reflection of the youth of uh, what was the learning experience about. We just played the game. Okay. But what did we learn from it? And after that, to connect it with the, the, uh, the rest of his life. How would I use my, what I learned in this uh, experience uh, back home or uh, at school or somewhere else? Uh, from uh, um, the other point of view, it's to, to use also external language, like uh, uh, the youngsters uh, can say, okay, uh, I learned uh, in this camp uh, to be a good uh, patrol leader. But let's not stop there. Uh, because when he goes uh, to somebody and uh, what did you learn? Well, uh, patrol, uh, to be a good patrol leader doesn't mean anything for, uh, for the other. Let's translate it also to lead a group of youngsters, to, lead a, uh, to be a good member in a team. And to use also these words and to... Uh, make them uh, uh, use them also not just the internal words the internal language of scouting but also the external ones um, an idea it was to, to use a certificate of competencies so when uh, we give them badges uh, or on the end on some uh, activities also uh, to translate it and uh, uh, to give them uh, uh, some certificates that it's written in uh, external language, what competencies it had uh, developed, maybe liber leadership or uh, communication, doesn't matter. Um, and uh, uh, on that part, actually, we can also involve, to be uh, youth participation, we can involve directly the youth to, to complete it himself. He wrote, uh, okay, I learned that and that and that and that competences and to leader to be there just to guide him with questions. Is that all what you, you learned? Are you too sure you learn, didn't learn something else besides that? Okay, and uh, uh, certificate of appreciation also for his uh, self-esteem and uh, for uh, he to to be happy also, and uh, to create uh, projects for the local community involving uh, citizens, so it's not just to work uh, in our bubbles of uh, patrols, but to work together with the local community that we are in, and uh, working with other stakeholders, like uh, the government uh, or others, uh, NGOs that are in the educational or youth. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Yeah. You deserve it. So the second group will answer the same question. Do you have any adding or comment or editing or rewording or anything else? We, we have a different color and we have a microphone. And it's for you. Oh, we should put it on. Maybe you can help. We can work together. Yes. Well, my sister here from Australia, she, uh, she highlighted that she do a really great thing. She sent you, you to have patrols. When you have learned, uh, had been through a program, with a award program, you send a, oh, you can tell this, yeah. Okay, so we use the, we use the award program, uh, the um, badge system, 
But when a youth member achieves the highest award in any section, then we then notify their school. And we put in the letter exactly in more management terms what that youth member has done, how they've served the community, how they've done duty to God, how they've done duty to themselves and how they've helped other people. And then the school then recognises this and has them up in assembly and the youth member in 10 different schools in one area, the local area I work in, will have that student get up and, and explain scouting to their whole community. And it's, it's really promoting it. But we do have to use the external language. Perfect. And our brother from Fiji, he also said that when, when we should promote, maybe you can write it, uh, some of it here. Yeah. Uh, also promote like life skills. I think it was a really great idea that it's not only about promoting the activities, but also the life skills, the social skills, all the th other skills that we learn in scouting. Anything we should add? Okay. Yeah, we also talked a lot about we should do, we promote scouting. Uh, some people said it's not possible to, to come into the media. The newspapers don't want to write about us. The television don't want to send anything about scouting. But we agree that we could also use the social media because the youth are on the social media. So we should use it more to promote the things that we actually learn. Yeah. So let's do a Facebook update from this session about yeah. it. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So actually, is there any other comments? Yes. Ah, no. Ah, okay. <laughs> Can we have people who have succeeded through scouting nationally in a st and uh, giving testimonies of uh, like live testimonies over radio, maybe on television? We profile them and then people see because of scouting you are now the vice president and you give what scouting helped you to like a live testimony that can be seen and documented. That's very interesting. We will add this and uh, Ban Ki-moon for example don't stop saying that he was a scout and he learned a lot of scouting, Neil Armstrong etc. So it's very important here it's global examples but at a local and national level it's, it's very important. There was only one point that I have heard yesterday in one of the uh, other sessions. It spoke and it was a um, uh, Australian uh, comment, so maybe uh, the friends from Australia can add uh, something on that. It's more for the adults, but it can also serve for the young people. It's uh, like uh, certifying the trainings. So the trainings, they get the, when the leader go on a scout training, he will follow the course normally, but he will also receive an... Uh, uh, kind of paper stating what he have learned in management uh, wording and they can actually people use it also for their professional uh, CV so it's, it's very very interesting so we are almost coming to an end so before I pass the floor to um, my uh, co-facilitator I will show you one a tool produced by the uh, French scouts which is um, actually in their website I'm not uh, from the French scout but it deserves to uh, have some marketing so it's called Empower Yourself, and actually it is in three or four languages, I think. So what they did is that it's a, a tool the, for uh, young people, for the scouts, and there is a big amount of uh, potential scout activities which are um, classified on uh, uh, the type of the skill. So what have been done within scouting and the same uh, skill or competency in the in management wording so the scouts after finishing some uh, activities he know that he learned also it is also a life skill and he can use the professional wording or the management wording to uh, talk about so it's one of the examples that can be uh, interesting for uh, different uh, NSOs Sorry. Yeah. Wonderful. So, it would be very kind if you can share with us the link uh, after in the end of the session. Thank you. <laughs> if it is not confidential, of course. Benson. Ah, what's the microphone, Benson? On these best practices, I believe that Belgium has a good uh, experience Benson. as well. 
and uh, one of the three, maybe the Baptist Association, I don't know, from the from, from Denmark. One, one of the one association there in Denmark has also good 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 stuff. There might be YMCA, I don't know, or the Baptist or the DDS. Yes. So actually, we are coming to an end of our session. Um, I will uh, give the floor to uh, Mary. We will go back on your expectations. We will try to see if we have answered totally or partially. And then we will try to open some, um, uh, give you some ideas. We have a tool from UNESCO in which there is a list of uh, youth-led uh, projects. I will let Mary uh, finish with that. And uh, uh, in between, I will distribute the evaluation form that uh, we will need to have before you leave the room. Thank you. Okay. We, um, yeah, we referred a little while ago to youth-led projects from a scouting point of view. And this is actually just a list. Very recently, um, in the end of October, UNESCO's Youth Forum was held, and there were 1,500 projects submitted to UNESCO, um, youth-led projects in seven different categories. 45 of them were prejudged and entered, uh, um, sorry, 45 of them were prejudged and brought to the forum. And from that, nine of them, three from each of the five UNESCO regions, were selected and went to the UN meeting, which happened last week, um, and to be nominated as UNESCO projects for the year and obviously to be funded by UNESCO for the year. So the 45 are there and the nine that were marked, or sorry, the nine are marked which were selected last week. Um, they're just interesting projects. We'll also put on the, uh, on the web page beside the, the web page for the session, we'll put some links. We'll put the link to the tool there. We'll try and find the link for the um, Belgian tool and we'll get the Australian link as well, if we may. <laughs> and, or, okay, well, well, we'll, we'll talk about that and we'll try and provide some sort of information on it. Um, we also uh, will provide a couple of the videos that you saw and one or two others which you might find useful or inspirational. We have one uh, from a lady who at the age of 13 stopped the world for five minutes when she addressed the UN and everybody just stopped listening and talked to her and she was quite impressive and to have a 13 year old in that position is excellent. Um, we'd like to go back to our um, objectives and our expectations. So first we'll take the expectations. Yes, your question. You did. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> So your question was very, very, very important. It is how to measure and monitor um, the social impact. So my answer is, is, was it that? Youth participation, I mean, youth participation is part of the uh, social impact of scouting um, through the young people. Yesterday, I had the chance to have a two or three hours talk with uh, a guy called Ruben Sassi, who is a key speaker uh, from UN. So he works in uh, FAO as a director, and um, he told me that actually one of the big challenges that faces UN offices, and especially in working with, uh, the choice to work with uh, youth organization, is the lack and the absence, total absence of uh, objective tools to measure this impact, so, uh, social impact. So actually, it is one of the very, very big challenge to find, to look for a tool which is objective and miserable that can give concrete, qu quantitative uh, re, um, indicators for such a qualitative uh, variable. So the answer is actually that it don't exist, even for the UN volunteers. And it's a big, big challenge to look for a real objective um, tool to measure this. So actually, Mary, if we may, maybe we go back to that. Yes, Vincent. Sorry. Reacting on that as well, uh, there was organized in Portugal earlier in, in June this year um, what was called the Youth Empowerment Study Session. And this involved um, other youth organizations, but as well two teachers from the fields of psychology and collective psychology and participation in society. And they were coming from the university, uh, from an American university. Um, and one of the big outcomes of this event was that 
to create these tools, um, maybe we need to have more and more partnership with some like academics and university and teachers because they have some expertise that would allow us to survey a bit uh, the quality of the youth participation that we have out there. Okay, and the other thing to consider is that we are 100 years old, or the world organization of the scout movement is just more than 100 years old in some countries and just less than 100 years old in other countries. And our, our mission and our goal is to create a better world. And the proof of that is very hard to see currently. <laughs> you know, if we ask ourselves the hard questions, and as responsible members of our NSOs, it's, we have to ask ourselves hard questions every now and again. And is what we're doing in our association contributing to a better society and to young people who have the skills to create a better society? And so I think that it comes back to us, but it is, it's a hard one to qualify, it's an, and it's almost impossible to qualify. So the session objectives, because Malutin, who's ready to start the next session, is standing at the door. <laughs> We're to discuss the importance of youth participation as an outcome of the scout process. So I hope that you feel that we have contributed to that. Uh, to consider the trends in active participation. And we tried to show you some young people uh, and what they were doing from a very early age. Um, to define a process which we had you work on. But <laughs> so, and to explore the importance of valorizing competencies. And I think through through all of the discussion that has happened, we have come to an understanding that valorizing is very useful and will help us going forward. Yeah, from your expectations, uh, most of the expectations were either to know about the subject, so I hope that we uh, participated in that, and the second one is was to share success stories, etc. Actually, it was not really on the plan, but I hope that all of us together through the web page, we can share if there is best practices, and we already had some of the best practices like the tool from Australia, from France, Belgium, whatever, etc. There was uh, two specific expectations I will, we will try to answer for. So one of that expectation is how can scouting help to deal with youth's apathy to get them more involved in society? I think the answer can be simply to challenge them. So we have to let them aware about the new challenges, their personal challenges, their social challenges so that they can react and uh, stop this apathy. And then challenge, uh, challenge is adopting youth participation, so adult versus youth. I think all of uh, the, the persons present here, we believe in intergenerational partnerships, so there should not be uh, youth versus elders, but we should act together. If there is no other comments or questions, I think we are done, Frederick, yeah, for the last comment. From Danish uh, side, we made a paper call on, on youth empowerment, which uh, I can distribute to you. Um, and we also did it to the conference in Europe, and European Conference just decided this summer that youth empowerment is on the strategic priority of the European region for the next three years. So, uh, yeah, just so you know, and we are very aware of that. Very good, thank you. So, if there is no more comment, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.